Last time on Let's Build a House, Juan and Johnny came back for a couple days and helped us finish framing the two pent roofs. Juan's a little like Smitty, big glory work guy. Next, Smitty showed off a bit and we framed the coffered ceiling in the master bedroom. And the windows that we ordered about five months ago finally showed up. We had these windows installed in two working days. This episode, we get into cornice work. Kind of a milestone. Besides the shingles, the cornice is the first step of finished work. Lastly, we started prepping for winter and dressed the place up for the incoming subcontractors. Let's build a house. Pull the soup can. What? Pull the goddamn soup can. Can I help you? Whenever we transition to a new task, Smitty likes to work out the bugs on the most challenging portions. The cornice work on the back side of the roof will be about 35 feet in the air and on a portion of the property where we can't navigate our lift. So Smitty decided to set his cherry picker up on the far side gable. Before the soffit and cornice, we started with the eave returns, also called a cornice return. This is a graceful way to transition to the eave and main fascia board around the gable end of a house. In layman's terms, this is an attractive way to kill the two roof lines that connect. This can be challenging because the returns are located outside the corner boards, which means they require additional structural support. There's a ton of ways you can do these, but Smitty started by building a box on the main ridge roof line. then applied mini rafters with the same pitch as the main roof. And once this was complete, he sheathed the box. I cut the drip edge to be installed on the fascia of the return. And Smitty took some time to properly shingle the return. These accents to the house take some time, but it's the little details that add up to make this house really come together. Each return took us a little over an hour, and we had to install six in total. With the eave returns complete, it's time to install the vinyl soffit. Soffit ceiling is the covering that creates a ceiling on the underside of the roof in the area that extends beyond the walls of a home. Simply put, it covers the gap between the wall and the fascia. Juan took me under his wing for the afternoon and helped me understand and install vented and unvented vinyl soffit. We're installing a vinyl soffit here in order to vent the roof properly. This is the first piece, it's called a J-channel, and it accepts and holds the vinyl soffit in place. We install the vinyl soffit in order to create a vent at the bottom of the roof line. And the purpose for that is so in the winter time when snow lays on the roof, the vent helps warm air clear the snow and ice from your roof so the snow doesn't sit all day long, melt, and then freeze at night, which could lead to ice damming and other problems. 
All right, so we're installing the vinyl soffit, right? Now, all of these cuts are gonna be the same length. So what we did was we created a jig that has that length, as well as a piece of plywood down here to keep it straight and true. So when I cut, my blade isn't going up and, and down on the soffit. So you take the jig, we're gonna slide it to our 11 and a quarter line. Place the sole right on the jig. So save some time, effort, and keep those nice. With the returns complete and the vinyl soffit installed, the last step is cornice. With our budget tight for this entire project, we had another decision point for the cornice and eventually the window trims. There are multiple different material options for trim, like standard treated wood, PVC, potash, metal, and others, but materials like boral and azek can triple the price. Smitty and I took some time and had a conversation about doing the trims in a beefed up 024 metal instead of 019. Smitty believed going with the heavier gauge metal would allow us to save the money without installing metal with waves and dimples along the long stretch of fascia. In order to properly install the metal cornice, we had to bend the metal on what is called a break. The break is used to bend the metal to the dimension we need for our cornice. Smitty gave me some lessons on how to bend the hem and bend the overhangs properly. I've never used one of these brakes, but I had to learn quickly. Smitty placed himself on the building to install the metal cornice. I was in charge of bending the metal and delivering the proper lengths to make his job easy up in the air. One way I helped deliver tools and material to Smitty was with our rope fishing line. It's kind of funny, we have people working to explore Mars, and I think it's just as cool that Smitty and I save each other some steps with a length of rope. With our roles defined and me getting much more comfortable on the break, we just put our heads down and chipped away on finishing the cornice. As you can tell, it took us a while. We started before the windows were even delivered. All in all, the cornice took us a solid two weeks, but with the metal, we save thousands of dollars, it looks great, and it's installed without requiring any paint. We're super happy with how this turned out. Well, it's that time of year. We have hit the late fall rainy season and winter is coming. 
With the house dry, we're ready to start scheduling the plumber, electrician, and HVAC subcontractors. We thought it was necessary to build a walkway so our subs weren't trekking through the mud. With leftover pallets from material we've used and some leftover planks, we built a temporary walkway to the front door. We want to take care of our subs. They provide a serious value to finishing the home, but also people take their work more seriously when the job is clean and easy to navigate. That's just human nature. Next, we wanted to close off our major openings to see if we could retain as much heat as possible in the home going forward. In the near future, we're going to need to hold about 45 degrees in the house for drywall. Having the temperatures dive in the winter with drywall installed causes drywall to shrink, meaning you could have nail pops and other issues. We're obviously going to get some insulation and a propane heater, but Smitty and I installed a temporary front door. If you look closely, those are Raptor paper side lights. We keep it classy around here. Next, Smitty came up with a way to block the cold air coming in from the garage. We had some leftover poly from earlier in the build, and Smitty thought it'd be a good idea to make temporary poly walls to retain some heat. So we fastened some plates to the garage floor, measured the size of the opening, and installed two four foot wide poly panels on each side. These will stay fastened to the floor. Next, we built four more four foot panels to be used as doors. With siding being ordered and ductwork materials, we'll need to be able to get in through the garage. Just when I thought Smitty was done with his tricks, he found a handful of small casters in his truck and we fastened them to the doors to make it easier to open and close. This effort doesn't necessarily help the house get done any faster, but keeping your subs comfortable and protecting finishes is worth the effort. Next time on Let's Build a House.